So hey everybody, everybody's been asking about these happy houses. You could turn them into bird houses. Mine are not bird houses, but in the event that you're gonna do bird houses, you may wanna do a little research online about how big the inside should be and the, how big the hole should be. So anyway, let's build some happy houses. Happy houses, you can make them into bird houses if you want to. I'm gonna be using one by six, which is not really one by six, it's like three quarters by five and a half. And if you wanted to make a small house, the whole thing could be made out of just the one by six. But this house starts with a one by eight for the front and the back, but it still uses a one by six on the side. I mention that because if you just wanna get one size of board, you could definitely make a one by six house. This is going to be a one by eight and a one by six, and that's what I'm gonna show you today, all right? So I'm just looking at, I'm not measuring, I'm just gonna make my house about this tall. I've got it lined up against the back, and I'm just gonna cut this. And I'm gonna use this piece, and I'm going to slide it over so that it's matched on this end, and then I bring the blade down and push the board up to where it touches the saw, and then I know that the second piece will be the same size as the first piece. I'm gonna cut that. So now that I've got my two pieces, I now wanna start building the shape of the house. So on chop saws, of course, you've got the option to, to rotate this. So I'm gonna rotate this and cut a pitch on the house top. Angle from that. Now that's a kind of a slight angle. So if I want to, I could turn it this way and cut an even bigger angle. I think that's probably what I'll do. But you also have the option of flipping it over and finding a different angle. I don't want to cut the same angle twice because to me that's a little bit boring. But if you wanted to, you could certainly change the angle. I'm going to use this. Start right there. Let this one come down a little bit. Now I want to cut a slight angle on each of these. So I'm going to push the straight end up. Notice that the saw is not at much of an angle at all. And I did cut both of those at the same time. I'm gonna flip this over. I think I would like to change that angle so it's a little more acute. So that this house has a little different shape on that part. So these are the sides. I've got a one by six for this, and I'm using the sides of my house to measure. I'm not using any measuring tape. When I put this down onto the side, take a look at this right here, where I'm just a little bit, I've gone just a little bit lower than the roof line right there. And I'm going to go ahead and make a mark just a little bit short, just a little bit short of the bottom, right? Once I've made that mark, I know that that's the size of the side of this part of the house. So I can put this on the chop saw, come to that mark. So now I need to do the same thing for the other side. So I'm just gonna flip it over to that other side. Again, I want it to be, I don't know, an eighth of an inch below the roof line. And I'm just a little bit short of the bottom. Not much, just a little bit. And then cut right on that mark. And I've got the short side. I've got one that's gonna fit on the short side, one that's gonna fit on the long side. And of course, I've got the other side of the house, which will be the back or the front, depending on whichever one that you've got. Now, one of the things that I recommend at this stage is that you put these face to face. You put both of these face to face and on the face to face, you put a B on the back one and you put an F on the front one. And those are gonna be hidden inside. So when you paint these, you're not gonna paint on the side with the F. You're not gonna paint on the side with the B. You simply have them front and back and they'll be painted on the outsides and on the sides. So that is the front 
in the back and you've got your two sides that are of different heights. All we need now is a base. I don't get too fussy about the base. I'm gonna do a base out of a one by eight. And that will be the bottom of the house, which if you look at this guy, that's what it's going to be in the house. I like to have the base bigger than the bottom of the happy house. For the roofs, we're gonna be using shims. So shims, of course, go from narrow to wide. I kind of have already learned that I'm going to probably need to take off about yay much. Again, I'm not measuring. I want them to ultimately be like a roof line on the house that is extending on the front and the back. And they'll also have an overhang on the sides. So the length of these shims is going to have to have, I don't know, approximately two and a half to three inches cut off of them. And I'm going to cut a lot of shims at one time. So I've just eyeballed what I want to have here. I'm going to do this, hold them nice and tight, and I'm just gonna cut right off of here. These are going to be used for the roof and these guys are gonna ultimately become the windows and the doors. I like these for windows, they're a little bit uh, small, so they're great for windows. When I do the doors, I will probably come in and just cut a door so that it fits somewhere in here like that. On the very, very top of the roof, I use a dowel and it's going to, once I put the slats on, this is gonna get painted. It'll also get put right on the very top of the ridge line. So we're gonna be screwing this together now. They're painted. I'm gonna be using, these are number eight. These are exterior coated screws so that they will last a while. And I'm gonna use a drill bit to do a pilot hole. Fortunately, I have another one with my Phillips screw so I can just go back and forth between the two of those. So I have to say for all you woodworkers out there, this is not my skill set. So if you have another way that you would like to do it, by all means do. But people were asking how I did them. And this is pretty much how I have made all of them over the last few years. Now we need to put the base on. You can choose to set it back so it has a bigger front porch, or you can choose to set it centered, or you can also choose to offset it. This doesn't really matter. happens so once we get to this stage I don't really have the doors or the windows on it yet but I'm putting this on top of my burned oak trees I cut them off at whatever height I want and I don't put the roof on until I make three pilot holes in the bottom and I use longer screws to screw at least three screws putting this on the tree I almost failed to mention because you can't get your screwdriver in this. You can certainly do it by hand, 
but I have an extension for a Phillips so that when I put it on my drill, I've got an extension that allows me to put those screws in in this deep cavity. So then after that's on the tree, I'll go in and we will, the, using silicone, I will put the slats on for the roof. We'll put the dowel across the top of the roof and then we come back in and just decorate it using silicone to put on the doors and the windows. So one of the things that I decided on my happy houses a long time ago is they could be painted any way that anybody wanted to paint them, but I would use yellow windows with black window panes and black trim. I even think the doors can be any color that they want them to be. That feature alone kind of unifies the entire village and I think it looks great. So remember all these scraps that I've cut out from making the angles, this is what I use for the chimney. I just put it up against, choose whatever you want, and then that's gonna get painted black, and we're gonna just glue it to the top for the chimney.